Well, yeah, even in some mid-sized companies, I'm finding, especially with what's going on in the economy lately, more and more companies are really starting to take an honest shot of, do we need to be spending this? Is right. this justified? Or is it a better use of our money to hire an in-house tech and pay them 30, 50 grand a year to save us all of this on a temporary thing? It's like, cause that's well, and what? so many people who are familiar with open source are familiar enough with it to be able to train other people on it. So mm -hmm. the whole uh, the, there's that whole stigma that we can't start using open source because what if our future employees don't understand it? Well, you bring one in and it spreads like a virus. They start teaching the, the others how to use it. Where here's the documentation and here's how this works. And well, no, and really, really what uh, and I and I've noticed some small and mid sized businesses really beginning to notice this. If you hire one person, like you say, who knows it? And you basically keep them on a temporary capacity, six to 18 months, enough time to set the hard stuff up for you so it's up, make a backup so you can then hit, you have an ISO to restore from and everything else, and then train your staff how to use it. You, in some cases, wind up being more productive on less money, and then your long-term maintenance costs are less. It's can you afford that initial hump getting over the hurdle? And, and Depending on the size of the company, the number of people to train, the scale of what's going on, sometimes it's cheaper to do like the 50 grand for Microsoft and stuff. Sometimes it's cheaper to get over that just one initial hurdle, and once you've got that done, this temporary position ends and either transitions into a permanent one or that person goes somewhere else and does the same thing for another company, and your company's still good to go. Like I, I, and I'd like to see more companies doing that. Well, it, it's and here's the thing. At the end of the day, uh, uh, like I'm saying, those positions are temporary. Like I, I do those positions all the time, but I largely work as an independent contractor, which means it doesn't really affect me if I have a three-month temporary work contract because you know I'll just go find something again in three months. It's not like there aren't other companies to go to and, and yada yada and so forth. And sometimes they wind up being semi-permanent jobs where they're not enough to live on, but they're good for 10 hours a week here or there, and yada and so forth to come in and go, like, oh, okay, fix this. <laughs> uh, but some people the, the, are looking more for a job, and that's one thing that the Windows side of stuff creates more because you have to keep paying for it. But I also think in the long run it also uh, keeps some jobs from being created. Rather than spending that money on expanding and doing other stuff and jobs you actually need, you're spending money on stuff you may not actually. Uh, well, and you're spending money to, to lease software rather than to, to pay a person. I mean, think about it. if you pay $100,000 for a copy of Microsoft SharePoint rather than paying somebody $50,000 to administer something for two years, and you're going to have to keep paying that every time a new version comes out because they want you to keep updating, hey, we're going to stop supporting this now. Yeah. No, and, and, and that that is the game. This planned obsolescence, yada yada, and so forth. That's I, it, you know, it, I can't count the number of times I wind up in a business where, that's I, I, I think they're wrong, but they cause like you know they should have just stopped all development at when whatever. You know, it's like some of them it's ninety five, some of them it's ninety eight, some of them it's XP, some of them it's like they're like this was the perfect window. They should have just stopped. And I'm like, no, they shouldn't stop, but. On the same token, there's they shouldn't artificially limit what this can do, and that can uh, it's most of those limits are artificial, not because they can't upgrade it. Anyways, we got a little off topic there. Uh, on to well, this is just being quite a week for Google. <laughs> um, I. I don't know what to make of this in, uh, in the long run with the. Google being sued here in this, uh, it's, I, I'm having a har hard time finding, y you could argue whether or not this is an infringement or not either way, you really could, it, 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 and it's, it's one of those splitting hairs things that makes a blading chasm of how screwed up what is and isn't patentable, what is protected software, what isn't protected software, rather the idea implementation or the actual implementation itself is sad. Uh, when, when I look at this, whether you love or hate Google, I'm having a hard time finding the actual infraction. At the end of the day, I think this is going to be settled and Oracle's going to get a lot of money out of this. 
which is the whole reason they're suing Google. Uh, so they're like, yeah, well, we, we spent a, a good chunk of money buying Sun. Let's see if we can't recoup some of that out of Google. <laughs> it's, it's like, I see dollar signs in them there, Oogles. <laughs> well, and, and they, they managed to wait just long enough to where Android was really taking a decent share of the market. And then, uh -huh. oh, oh, by the way, that's ours. Gimme. Yeah, it, it, it's the, they, they waited until Android's position was firmly presented. It's like, oh, you're out selling iOS now. Okay, good. Let's... Let's, yeah, okay. That, you must that, be using our stuff, so give us some money. Yeah, the Apple suits haven't put the handset manufacturers out of business. End users are clearly embracing you now. You've got, you've got the momentum to move forward. Okay, give us money. <laughs> it's like, not, oh, we just bought Oracle. Stop doing this. Yeah, it's, the, the really sad thing is, in the long run, if this does go through the way that Oracle probably hopes it will, Android will still be going. Uh, all these handsets will still be coming out. Google will just have to license Java from Oracle, and they will pass that cost directly on to the end user. And the so everybody and, who buys and, an Android and, phone get that extra tax on top of it. In the short term, yes. In the long run, I think this is actually going to hurt Oracle, uh, Oracle's uh, ownership of Java in general. And the reason I say that is because in the long run, I see less companies using Java. Yeah, I, I did. Well, I mean, it, basically, if you try to use it and then suddenly get sued for being popular with it, why would you ever want to use it in the first place? Well, no, no. Why would you want to use Java in the first place? In my opinion. What, anyway? No, 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 no. What, I, I don't, and I don't disagree with that. Um, uh, and, and it's, uh, and yeah, it's what I really say. And you know, a lot of things have started to move off of Java. Anyways, it's like this will just speed the process up. That's <laughs> is right. what it will. It's. Um, and Java's used in a lot of things these days. In case you ever wonder why your cable DVR, you know, is so screwed up and so laggy, that's because that's Java. <laughs> Most of them are, not all of them. That's, uh, and honestly, I don't really see any of those things using that anymore. I, I see the next generations of those just going, we're going to use something else, anything else, to avoid this situation. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised to see HTML5, honestly. Don't, uh, I don't know if that's... I'm sure it's a possibility. Uh, but well, uh, after but seeing some of the implementations lately, like uh, Jolly Cloud, the, uh, the Ubuntu-based netbook distribution, if they can put that sort of interface on a, a cable box on a cell phone, that, uh, well, I mean, Migo's doing that already, so it's, it's yeah. just a matter of time before that makes it downstream. Well, it's like, and that would be good for, any th for a lot of things, but that wouldn't fill in every situation. One thing that's been proposed to me, and I am not enough, I don't understand enough about programming doing that stuff, so I can't really critique on this idea or not, has been proposed by some people who are studying programming, is uh, one thing that might be done as far as the open source side of things is uh, making a compiler for the Python language. Uh, uh, actually, it, it is possible to compile Python code already. Okay. But and and use that as a substitute. Would that be a good substitute? Or uh, Python is extremely fast, especially if it's pre-compiled. But uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it all depends on on what sort of GUI you're putting on top of it, because those can get a little bit slow. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't have enough experience with the graphical side of Python to really know what would be the best way to go. Well, and the other thing I would ask there, as far as that's, like you say, getting slow, is is that because there just wasn't enough computing power, and if you did the other stuff and another cycle of Moore's Law, would it even be a noticeable lag? Right. Because, uh, I mean, it's well, let, let's face it, the computers we have today were the supercomputers of a few years ago. <laughs> That's like another cycle of Moore's Law. I don't even want to know what my desktop's going to be for crying out loud. There were computers, supercomputers not too long ago, really. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, 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 well, I mean, the obvious thing on the whole supercomputer thing, it's... Uh, it is the you know the fight the funding of terrorism a computer faster than why I can't cross U.S. borders without miles of red tape. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, I, I I am a, I swear I'm a patriot. I'm not for the trafficking of illegal computers in any way, shape, or form. Even though that does nothing to prevent that shit. It's like, it's, it's like I, I'm sorry to get off on that tangent, folks, but the U.S. U.S. Customs has a rule that once it's in the U.S., if it's faster than, I want to say, 233 or 333 megahertz or something, it can't leave the country, it, unless you're a friendly country, uh, because it, it would be, you can't be exported from the U.S. 
unless you're a friendly country or a country that's well regulated. In some cases, you actually can't send it to Mexico. And the whole logic behind this is these computers could be used as supercomputers to create nuclear weapons. And no matter what they are, they could be reverse engineered for this. And I'm like, okay, on the one hand, I get your logic, but on the other hand, I laugh at it because the computers we sent people to the moon and did the original Manhattan Project with were less powerful than your limit. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I hate your logic, but it just seems like busy work. <laughs> As opposed to actually preventing anything. But, mm, yeah. Um, but anyways, back to Google and the, and the Big Bad Oracle and everything else. I, it's... I don't see this hurting Android. I see, like you say, it will hurt the end user. Because uh, ultimately, the, like you say, the, the price is going to be passed down in all the Android handsets and, and everything else. Um, 